Yeah, good day everyone. Welcome to Dynamics of Beauty channel. You know, a wise man once said something that the young ones have time, but they don't have wisdom. But the old have wisdom, but they don't have time. But when God wants to help the young, he brings the wisdom of the old and the time of the youth. So Apostle talked about the importance of honoring spiritual fathers. So they bring extensive experience and wisdom gained through facing numerous challenges as said that the younger minister often lack. It is essential to honor these spiritual fathers even with their imperfections as disrespecting them could block the transfer of spiritual world blessings. Apostle also spoke about the pitfall of pride, you know. Apostle also warned against the arrogance that can come with thinking we know it all, you know. These young ministers, we are just like we know it all generations. Continuous learning and humility are key. We must remain open to the lesson offered by every member within the body of Christ, recognizing and respecting the unique graces God has bestowed upon others. You know, for a revival to occur, we need vessels that are yielded and also respect the workings of the Spirit across the church apostle also called for a new generation that embraces humility respects spiritual leaders and learn from each other ensuring a flourishing spiritual community so make sure you listen to this message from beginning to end especially if you're a young minister and make sure you share and subscribe and turn on the notification button thank you so much never get yourself believing that you are better or greater than the fathers you are wasting your time these fathers you see, there are things they have seen. There are many of us, particularly younger ministers who have not even started. But our pride will not allow us to be used by God. It is true that there is a mandate upon our lives. But can I tell you, these fathers have lasted decades serving the Lord. We need to be careful. Our works are even yet to be vetted. But these are men who God has granted them grace. They have stood through storms. They have stood through rains. Things that some of us will not even be able to pass the test of half of it. The generation that dishonors their fathers is the generation that will never receive any mantle. Let me say it again. The generation that dishonors fathers, even if your father is Noah and you saw him drink and was naked, you still deserve that honor unto death the generation that becomes self-sufficient and believes that the fathers have nothing to show or oh, i have seen it all is it not the prayer of our father is it not god bless you is it not receive be careful what makes the stature of a man is beyond his sermons what makes the stature of a man is his experience with god and god's covenant with that man If you judge people by what you perceive to be quality of sermons or quality of charismatism, you will make many mistakes. For instance, a man like our father in the Lord, Baba Deboe, if he comes here right now to come and preach, some of you may be, may be, may be with all due respect, you may be sleeping and nodding your head, and saying, well, he's a father, we respect him. But, ah, this sleep, I didn't sleep yesterday. John chapter 3, verse 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. You turn there. And the arrogant person has finished quoting it for him. For God so loved the world that he gave his word. Okay, what is there now? What is the Greek and Hebrew? And he says, well, because of this, God wants to save you. He wants to heal you. But let me speak a word of blessing to someone. And you see someone who has not made it, not raised anybody, is broke, is poor, doesn't have any discernment, pocket in his hand, and wondering. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just being passionate. And at the end of it, those who have even made it are shouting amen sincerely. And that person gets up, and after two weeks, you vanish out of relevance. I repeat to you, dear generation, what makes the stature of a man in the spirit is beyond the sermons. There is a track record men have with God that God honors them all through their lifetime. And we must learn this. There is a lot we must learn from the fathers. Number two, there is a lot we must learn from one another. One another. One another. By this teaching, we must cast away the know-it-all mentality. No. Joshua Selman, is there any other thing you do not know? Who would lie to you like that? Do you know how many things I do not know? Do you know how many other heights we need to cross in the spirit? 
Never allow what you know to destroy your passion to learn what you do not know. Even if every sick person that comes around me gets healed, even if every oppressed person around me comes and is delivered, I still have something to learn. You see, when I go for meetings to teach, I go to be a blessing to the people. But as I sit there, I'm like a sponge, learning all I can learn. If I can learn spirituality, I can learn excellence and administration. It's not an advantage we had in the north by default, with all due respect. Most of the things I learned in terms of administration and leadership did not come from my background because I did not see that level of dexterity. Maybe moral excellence, maybe sincerity, but I had to outsource from people. For some of them, they received our spiritual understanding. In exchange, we received their understanding of administration and dexterity. That sharing is one of the things that God wants to restore in the body of Christ. That we can sit down and learn sincerely from one another. The dimensions, there is no need trying to dig a well that has been dug. If God has anointed and graced a person in an area, it is important that that grace is respected and the riches from that grace is received. This is how we will accelerate our becoming a mighty vessel. Hallelujah. No matter how many things you know about prayer, my God, there are people who have been praying before we were born. There are campgrounds in this nation where prayer is 24 hours. Even if you have been making mistakes in prayer for 30 years, I think you should have learned something there. There is always something we can learn. Hallelujah. I can tell you graces that I've met and the things that I've learned. I remember one time, years ago, I was just getting to know, with all due respect, I was just getting to know living faith. Do you know how I got to know about God's servant? It was the kind of testimonies I was hearing. That someone will tell you that he was a cleaner and by the next week, he's a manager. What kind of testimony is this? A cleaner then becomes a manager. No interview. And I discerned, I said, what kind of grace is this? We were not born to see that kind of grace. So we opened up our hearts. There must be something here. Lord, with humility, this grace is for our taking and they give it freely. What honor component must come in to receive? And some of the things we have gotten today has come from these streams. Every time I've had the honor to meet our father in the Lord, Daddy Gio, I don't go there as a man of God bragging I'm in a hurry to go on my knees. Lord, what else is it upon this man's life that can be useful for the sake of the generation we are representing? This is not human worship. I remember one time, I've shared with you the story. I went to preach for a particular ministry and they kept me at the prayer city, MFM prayer city. I slept quietly when it was night and all the protocol that came had gone back. I came out by myself and strolled around that place and prayed i said lord whatever you deposited here koinonia does not have a campground yet do you know the grace that made these people go to the bush and turned it into cities come on now don't tell me that is intelligence you try it do you notice there was a grace that was released upon that generation they all caught it bushes to cities you are still struggling to get a duplex a bungalow and yet there are graces listen every challenge in the body of christ has somebody in the body of christ who carries the anointing to solve it it is lack of discernment and sheer dishonor to one another vertically and horizontally that is responsible for our stuntedness there are people who were born from families full of poverty. They cried unto God. They fasted. They covenanted with God. And Jehovah Jireh showed up for them. And told them, I want to give you the keys. 
that can bring people into blessings when they found it they said body of christ there is something i found and those who don't even have it insulted it looks like every generation seems to master the art of persecuting their saviors so if someone comes up now and says god said i should prosper you the next thing you find out what what do i need the prosperity for listen i don't want to tell you the bills the things that have been paid and will be paid for for this conference if i tell some of you you will not sleep this night you saw that venue we we're clapping about use your intelligence that kind of beautiful venue if it's your own how much will you give it out <laughs> the venue you are sitting in right now down to all the overflows the basement outside if it is your property, how much do you think it is to run Koinonia every service? And you are not raising any extra offering. You are enjoying now. Everything is working. You are fine. The security architecture in this ministry alone. Let, let me leave that. To glory be to God. The revival that is coming and the vessels that God desire, please hear me, they must be vessels that are yielded enough. First, loving Jesus with all your heart. But number two, respecting the investment of the spirit that has been scattered across the body of Christ. No matter how you walk with God personally, you will not get every grace you need directly from him. Did you hear what I said? No matter how close you walk with God, the graces that you will need have been carefully distributed across the body. It will take humility and submission to God, to one another, to his system. There are many churches today who have some of the most brilliant minds in the nation as the members. And most of the problems that plague those churches, there are consultants in those churches. In five minutes, they can create a financial model, a leadership model that would take that church out of suffering and mediocrity and numerical decline forever. And yet we men of God come with our pride. Just because intelligent people submit to listen to us, we think that we are talking to a band of dummies. Koinonia for a case study. Ladies and gentlemen, you have no idea the kind of intelligent professionals. Some of them sit only in the overflow. They don't even come inside. These are people of pedigree and they just come to learn and listen quietly. This is the generation that must adopt humility so we do not make a mess of ourselves in pride and then we do not mislead a generation to follow through.